Good morning, Tequila Tigers. Welcome to Mrs. White's at Home Read Alouds. Make sure you have a pencil and paper or a sibling or adult to talk to. This is the chapter book edition. And today we're going to be reading chapter 7 of The Buried Bones Mystery. So at the end of chapter 6, um, where we left off, Rashawn had gone home to talk to his dad about the box, about like, about police work, right? He was asking him about the basketball court and um, he found out that the police had some clues about who destroyed it. And um, the clue that really struck Rashawn was um, the message that whoever did it left. And it, the message said, them bones gonna rise again. Um, so chapter seven, um, in this chapter, we're going to find out a little bit more about the boys questioning their neighbors. Jerome sat on his porch and watched his sisters as they quietly took turns braiding each other's hair. He didn't really mind watching them today because he had a lot to think about. Where did those bones come from? What should they do with them? Would they get in trouble for not telling what they found? And how was he going to find any clues? Maybe Granny will know something, he thought. She's lived in this neighborhood all her life. Just then, Tamika and Latanya started to argue. It's my turn to play with the black Barbie. Nuh-uh, you had her yesterday. Jerome, she won't let me see the black Barbie. Jerome couldn't understand why Granny didn't just buy two of everything and save him the trouble of listening to them argue. But he told them, Tamika, why don't you go get the crayons out and color all the Barbies in the coloring book any color you want. Latanya, you play with the black Barbie for a while, then let Tamika, Tamika see her, okay? The girls seemed satisfied for the moment, and Jerome was glad to see Granny getting off the bus at the corner. Granny, want to see the picture I colored? Tamika yelled from the porch. That's really pretty, baby, said Granny as she climbed the steps and sat down on the porch swing. Jerome, bring Granny a glass of ice water, please. Tamika, Latanya, it's nap time. Go on in there and lie down for a few minutes. But Granny, we're not even sleepy, protested Tamika, who was six and thought she was too old to have a nap. You don't have to sleep, child. Just lie down for five minutes with your eyes closed, okay? After the girls went inside, still mumbling about not being sleepy, Jerome said, You know, Granny, one day they won't fall for that trick and they'll stay awake and we'll have to listen to them all afternoon. Granny chuckled, I know, child. You're a good boy to help, them, help me with them like you do. You're growing up and I'm real proud of you. Jerome smiled. Granny didn't toss out compliments very often. Can I ask you something, Granny? Sure, child. You've lived around here a long time, haven't you? Now you know that. I was born in that house where your friend Ziggy lives now. Then, when I married your grandpa, we moved over here. Your mama was born here in this house, and so were you. Did you ever hear about any mysteries when you were little, Granny? The old people always told spooky stories about ghosts and things like that, but I don't remember any mysteries. Except for, well, that was different. What, Granny? Tell me. It's nothing really, and it probably isn't even true. Tell me, please. Well, when I was a little girl living in your friend Ziggy's house, there was that tall fence all around the backyard, the one you made your clubhouse out of. It was much taller than we were, and it only had one gate, which was always locked, so we didn't have to think about what was on the other side. When Granny mentioned the fence, Jerome shivered a little. Maybe he was going to get a clue after all. Did you ever find out? Yes, but sometimes not knowing the truth is better. What do you mean, Granny? On the other side of the fence was a graveyard, Granny whispered. But Granny, said Jerome, trying to hide the shakiness in his voice, there's an apartment building and a parking lot there now. Yes, child, they built that more than 50 years ago when I was just about the age you are now. Some folks tried to complain, but the builders just ignored them and put that apartment complex right over that graveyard. Do you think there's ghosts over there, Granny? asked Jerome. Suddenly, the warm summer air felt chilly. I don't know, but I do know that when I was about 10 or 11, I used to hear the old folks whisper stuff about boxes of bones. It scared me, so I never asked any questions. 
Granny, what did they? That's enough of that. You make me feel cloudy on a sunny day. I don't want to talk about that stuff anymore. She went in the, into the house to check on the girls, and Jerome sat on the porch, shivering. What had they found? He couldn't sit there any longer. So he yelled through the screen door to Granny that he was going over to Rico's house. Jerome thought Rico's mom acted like the mother on that old TV show, Leave it to Beaver. She never had her hair in curlers, never had a dirty kitchen, and never ate pizza. But even though she was what Ziggy called a neat freak, she was always willing to drive the four friends wherever they needed to go. She and Rico were just pulling out of the driveway when he got there. Hello, Jerome. Rico asked me to take him to the library. All of a sudden, he has an interest in bones. Dinosaur bones, he said. Do you want to come along? Yes, ma'am, replied Jerome as he hopped in the back seat. He knew what Rico was up to. Any clues? whispered Rico to Jerome. You won't believe it, Jerome whispered back. Just wait till I tell you. Rico's mother dropped them off at the library and told them she'd be back in about an hour. Rico went straight to the information desk. Do you have any books on bones? Bones, the tired-looking librarian said over her glasses. What kind of bones? Oh, dinosaur bones, chicken bones, pork chop bones, and human bones, said Rico with a nervous grin. Try the science section, over there to your left, third shelf down. Rico and Jerome hurried over and found exactly what they needed. Three books on human, animal, and dinosaur bone structure. They put the dinosaur book on top of the pile and walked quietly, walked quickly to the checkout desk, bumping into the old man in front of them in line and making him drop his large stack of books. You kids watch where you're going, he said with a growl. This library, this is a library, not a zoo. Sorry, Mr. Green, said Jerome as they helped him pick up his books. We didn't see you. Now, if you remember, Mr. Green from the last chapter... That was who rented the chainsaw, right? Well, the last time I checked in the mirror, I wasn't invisible, Mr. Green snapped at them. But I may as well be for all anybody cares, he mumbled to himself. So here's a picture of the boys picking up. This must be Mr. Green. Rico and Jerome didn't know what else to say, so they apologized again, checked out their books, and waited in front of the library for Rico's mom to pick them up. Did you see the books that Mr. Green was checking out, asked Jerome? Yeah, kind of weird. They were all on cemeteries and stuff. Here comes my mom. Let's get out of here. As Rico's mom drove them back home, they sat in the back seat, turning the pages of one of the books they had checked out, looking at the pictures, then quietly looking at each other. They were scared. The book in their bones was called Bones of the Human Body. All right, that's the end of chapter seven. Um, so time to pause and reflect. What I want you to write or talk about today is do you think the boys should tell their parents what they found? Why or why not? Go ahead and pause and write or discuss. All right, tigers, that was the end of chapter seven of the Buried Bones Mystery. We're definitely more than halfway through the book now. I hope you're enjoying it, and I hope you come back soon for more. Bye-bye.